Hello, I'm Sarami, and today we're sewing the Esmond Pants by Cashmerette, which is part of their monthly Cashmerette Club membership program. You can learn more about how to sign up for the club at cashmerette.com slash club. Let's get to it. I'm gonna be sewing both view A and view B today, but you can mix and match the details between both views on your Esmond pants. View A has a pleated cargo pocket with an angled flap. View B has a fully gusseted pocket with a square flap. For the hem detail, view A has a draw cord hem and I'll be making the draw cord. So if you didn't pick up any draw cord, you couldn't find any tool tape, I'll be showing you how to do that. And view B has an elasticized hem. View A has a zippered back pocket with a built-in flap, and View B has a zippered pocket with an exposed opening. Both have an elasticized center back waist with belt loops. The only other difference is View B also has a one and a half inch D-ring right here at the waist. All right, let's go over the materials and the notions I'm gonna be using today. So for all of views, I'm going to be using a zipper for my zipper fly, which is a little longer than your two back pocket zippers. So view A and view B each have zippered back pockets and there's a zipper length corresponding to the size packet that you picked for your pattern. I'm also using a cotton wrapped polyester thread. This is a little heavier weight. I use this usually for making jeans and things like that. And I find it just a nice sturdy thread. Plus I wanted something a little bit visible on the darker fabric that I'm using. This is a one and a half inch wide elastic. We need this for our back waist. And then we need two snaps at the end. So I have my two snaps and we need a hidden button. And then I have a label here. My fabric is a canvas and the right side has a print and the back side is a solid. And it's a little bit heavier than most of the canvases you see at the fabric store. So I felt like this was a really great pant weight. And I'm gonna be using a size 16 needle in my sewing machine because of the weight of this canvas. For view A, we also need some twill or something to make a draw cord with. So I'm gonna be making my draw cord and so I just used self fabric. Mine happens to be cut on the cross grain since that was the longest length I could find on my leftover fabric. For view B, we also have a one and a half inch wide D ring and some elastic for the leg cuffs. I'll also be using probably my hair marker or this soapstone pencil so you can see the marking. And all of our seam allowances are half inch unless I tell you otherwise. All right, are you ready to sew? Let's do it. I'm gonna be sewing both view A and view B and I'll let you know clearly when I switch from one to the other. If I don't indicate what view I'm sewing, it's because those steps are for all views. All right, so we're gonna start with our front pockets. And so we're gonna interface that pocket opening edge there and then we're gonna turn it three eighths and three eighths to be able to hem this opening here. I've also pre-finished this edge here using a serger and I'm gonna use a serger just to finish all of my edges during the Esmond pants. All right, so we're gonna top stitch this opening and when I'm using a top stitch thread or when it's like a nice top stitch, I usually top stitch from the right side. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you can always do it from the back side as long as your bobbin thread gives you the effect that you want. I'm using a three millimeter top stitch length. Looks really nice, doesn't it? All right, so let's do a second row. There we go, and let's do our other one. All right, next we're gonna fold under this edge a half inch on all three sides here so we can top stitch it to the pants. We're gonna double check that our pockets are identical still so we can make any adjustments now so our pants don't look asymmetrical. And you'll also notice that I pressed up these two edges first, then this little corner. It'll make it a lot easier for this corner to lay flat and also be the same size as one another. It just is a nice little way to get that corner really symmetrical. All right, we'll line up your pocket along the side seam here and the waist. And there's a notch here and a notch right here. And I like to just pin kind of in the middle. 
There's no need to pin around the edge if I've already pressed it. This just keeps it from shifting. Always do two pins. One pin, it can still kind of move around a little bit. And we're gonna do two rows. You can see also I have these markings here. That is for the corner of my pocket, which lines up pretty good. All right, so let's... All right, now we're gonna base the side seam here and the waist here inside a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And one thing that I'm gonna do um, that's optional is I'm gonna fold my pants up like this and I just sort of secure them so that there's less to manage and less is flopping around. It makes it a little easier to manage. So you'll see my pants rolled up like this and it's just because I have it temporarily pinned. All right, let's repeat all these steps for our other front pocket. All right, for back pocket for view A or the covered back pocket for, this is piece four, we're gonna take the pattern piece and you can see I've cut out the zipper opening here. It's just so it's easier for me to mark. And we're gonna mark our zipper opening on the right side. I just need a ballpark. I mean, I need it to be precise, but I don't really need this to be a precise rectangle because we're gonna put our interfacing on here. And this one as well, I've marked the hole for the zipper and we're gonna line that up with that marking. And this is the fusible interfacing and we're gonna put this right side together. So the right side meaning the non-fusing side of the interfacing. So we're gonna put this face down and I'm gonna line it up with the marking that I just drew on there like this. And this time it's a little more important and I would much rather this square be you know parallel to edges here, perpendicular to the sides because this is going to be the zip opening right here. So we're gonna pin this, I'm just gonna pin it around the outer edge here so it doesn't shift. All right, we're not fusing anything yet, right? We have the fusible side facing up, non-fusible side facing down towards the right side of our pocket. And we're gonna stitch this rectangle and I'm gonna put my stitch length down to 1.5. So pretty small. You want a nice tight stitch going around this perimeter here. That way it'll secure all the threads, especially on canvases and things like that. All right, so I, I never start in the corner. I always start in the middle. You don't really want to back stitch in the corner there. So we're gonna stitch right here in the middle and we're gonna go all the way around. And when we go to the ends, we're gonna count the number of stitches when we go up and down those so that they're symmetrical. All right, so I'm gonna count my stitches down the length here. And now we're gonna turn, go across. And we're really going for a parallel line here. We, you know, we wanna be on that rectangle, but at this point now, what rules is what's already on the fabric. So we wanna be parallel to our already stitched edge and the marker is fatter than my stitches. So it's really easy to have a line that is straight, but it's inside that marker and more marker might be on the left of it or the right of it in certain places. So we're focused on our stitch line. All right, now we're gonna count the same number of stitches, turn, and then we're gonna meet up with our starting point. All right, back stitch. Remove our pins here. And now we're gonna cut our typical slit that we do for any kind of pocket like this. So usually it has the Ys at the end. So I'm just trying to get it started. And now we'll go up to the corners there. And I always look at the other side and see how close I got. Because sometimes it's a little bit different. All right, and now we're gonna pull the interfacing to the back side here. Interfacing is definitely the weaker fabric here. The canvas is definitely thicker. It's gonna bully this interfacing. So we just wanna really just see how well we cut our corners here and how they're looking. And then now, once we decide, okay, yep, I've clipped down into the corner good enough, I'm gonna get a nice crisp corner there. Now we can com more commit to our pocket opening here. And so we can press this open and now we can iron the interfacing down. And we also want to make sure that we're not seeing the interfacing. So we want to see a little sliver of fabric there when we go to the iron, just a little bit. Just enough so that when you're looking on the right side, you don't see interfacing, right? All 
You can see I'm sort of anchoring the interfacing so that I'm prioritizing the window of the hole here. So I'm pulling it and I'm looking for a little sliver of fabric and then I'm tethering it by ironing it down. I'm not committing to this quite yet because I want to make sure the interface, I have enough interfacing to pull everywhere I go. And now it's getting a lot easier now that it's kind of behaving around this edge and I can start pressing. You don't want the interfacing, press it down and then you, you're locked into a shape you didn't really like. So let's also look at this from the right side. All right, now we're gonna place our zipper. Make sure you have the right length behind your opening here, just like this. And you can pin this in place. This is definitely one of those kinds of zippers that will get a little wonky, so you'll see it crooked in the pocket like this. Maybe not that bad. So just be careful. I'm just gonna pin one side I think I'll be able to stay most accurate if I put two pins along one side. I'm not gonna pin this side since I have two over here that will help it and I can kind of see, okay, is it symmetrical? Um, do I see the same amount above and below the zipper? And I'm gonna start sewing on the bottom edge here so that I can secure that immediately. All right, so we're gonna put this back to our regular stitch length, 2.5. And just remember that you can shape this rectangle. Don't let it bow out like this. You can shape it and kind of ease it into place so that you get a nice rectangle. All right, we're gonna stitch right along that folded edge. And I'm gonna have to open my zipper, slide the slider out of the way. And now I'm gonna close the my zipper slider past and we'll finish this and now you know you can kind of make sure your zipper is still in the center of your rectangle go. all right now we have our zipper all right now we're going to create this flap all right, so our first fold is gonna be this one where the notches are just above the zipper opening here. So we're gonna fold this down, just like this, right along those notches. And now we're going to fold it up, right along this notch here, lining this up. So what I would go for right now is symmetry. So make sure that this width here is the same as this width over here and adjust it if it isn't. All right, we're gonna press this so that these folds are nice and crisp. And now we're gonna baste the ends right here just to secure this all in place. Now we have a covered zipper back pocket, very slick. And now we're gonna finish these edges here. If you don't have a particularly thready fabric, you probably don't need to do that. But if you don't want any of these threads here of your raw edge, eventually getting really long and then sneaking into your zipper, which will kind of, you know, prevent it from opening and closing, I would finish the perimeter of your pocket. All right, so now we're gonna press the perimeter here a half inch under or around all edges. All right, we're gonna line up our pocket to our markings on the back pant here. And again, I just like to pin a couple on the inside so it doesn't shift around just like that. So that's how it's looking. And I'm gonna start upside down. And we're gonna go around twice. We're gonna do two rows of top stitching. So we'll start here. Just, I'm going to start just below the flap. Something that's not too thick so I can kind of get my sewing legs under me. I'm making sure that this 
top turned back edge is hidden. We'll pivot and we'll go all the way around and then we'll do a second parallel row. go. Looks great. Got our zipper in there. All right, we're going to repeat this for your other pocket, just like this one. This is the View B exposed back zipper pocket. And I'm going to sew this one a little different than, than the instructions have you do it, but you can follow the exact same instructions for View A if you want to follow along with the cashmere instructions. Just don't do the flap bit, everything else is the same. So I'm going to do this a little differently because the zipper is exposed and I'm a little nervous my interfacing might show since I'm using white interfacing. So if you're kind of in the same boat as me, you might try this out. So I've already interfaced my back pocket piece. So in the instructions, you don't do that first. And I'm going to cut out a piece of my self fabric using this interfacing pattern piece. All right, so that's how we're different so far. And now we're going to mark our squares on our fabrics here. So on this one here, we're going to, on the back side of this little piece, I'm going to mark my square. And on the front side of my pocket, on the right side, I'm going to use something a little less conspicuous and get the exact same square or rectangle drawn on here. This one's a little easier to line up because the top edge lines up with the top edge of the pocket, just like this. All right, and now if we were following view A, this would be interfacing and we, had, we wouldn't have interfaced this piece here. So I'm gonna take my stitch length down to 1.5 and we're going to stitch these two together with the rectangle. And I'm going to start at the along the long edge here. I don't like to back stitch in the corner. When I get to the ends here, we're going to count those stitches so that we can get the exact same number at each end. So now we're going to count. And now we're going to turn. And now this time I'm more concerned about being parallel to this edge rather than staying on my chalk line because the chalk line is a little wider than my stitch line. All right, we're going to do the same number of stitches. Turn and meet up with our starting point. All right, and we're going to now follow the directions the same way. So we're going to cut our opening here. And if yours is thick like mine, you might have to do this in separate layers. So I lifted up that layer and I'm going to flip it over and double check too. And I start my Y about a half inch from the end. All right, make sure you've clipped all the way up to the corner. You don't have to get all the way up there. I find it sometimes a little better if you're like one stitch away. There we go. And now we're going to pull this to the inside. And because it's fabric, we can be a little firmer by creating those corners and give it a good tug. And now we're going to go to the iron and press this into a nice rectangle. So I'll probably start from the right side and sort of just press that flat. It'll kind of prime the edge there. Now, if yours feels really like tricky right now, don't, don't fret yet. It is tricky. So just remember you're being very firm with it right now. I'm kind of pulling it a little bit and pressing it into the shape that I want. You can tell it what you want. I roll this edge between my fingers to get it right on that edge there. And I really clean up the corner here. Now I can really press this down. And we'll repeat over here, roll it, roll it, and really pull to get that nice firm corner. And now we're gonna go to the right side and make sure it looks how we want. 
So basically, we just don't want to see our inner fabric, and this looks really good. Nice finished edge there. All right, so now we can put our zipper on. All right, so our edge is looking really nice and clean there. All right, so if you're doing two back pockets, you probably want your zipper to go a different direction for each pocket, so don't forget to flip it over there. All right, so now we have our zipper here, and I'm gonna pin it along the top edge twice along this long edge here to sort of keep it parallel to the zipper. All right, so there we have our zipper in the pocket opening, and we want a nice parallel zipper there. I'm gonna start along the bottom edge since I've only pinned the top edge, and then this way I can sort of anchor it down immediately. We're just gonna top stitch the zipper in place And we're gonna switch back to our regular stitch length. If you have a zipper foot, you can use that. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this pin now. And we're gonna place this. And I'm gonna open my zipper up and get rid of the head. Keep these pinched together down here best I can, or at least the same spacing. It's nice and parallel. All right, there we go. All right, now the time to attach our pocket, the exposed zipper back pocket. So I've finished all my edges here. You can see how this is looking. And I've turned them under a half inch. And you're gonna wanna finish the edges, especially if you have a fabric like mine with the canvas. The, these little threads will escape and go into your zipper. So, all right, so now we're gonna line it up on the markings here. And I usually just put a couple of pins to keep it from shifting like this. And uh, I'm gonna go around twice. So I'm gonna do two parallel rows. I'm gonna start right here. And right now what I'm fiddling with is making sure I have a nice straight edge and not letting it bow out at all. And I have this at my regular stitch length. When I get to these folded over edges, I always make sure to poke them back in there so that they don't sneak out. I'm keeping a crisp corner there. There we go. All right, it's time for side seam. So we're gonna put these right sides together and we're gonna sew it a 5 8 inch seam allowance. When we get down to the notches right here at the ankle, you're gonna to wanna to stop sewing at the top one, back stitch there, and we'll continue sewing at the lower one. That way we have an opening right here for our draw cord. For the view B side seam, we're gonna still sew this at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but we can finish the seam at the very end together. We don't need to stop sewing at the bottom. All right, we're gonna press our side seams open. Let me show you view A here, where this little opening is. We're gonna clip up to our seam line above and below the opening, just like that. We're gonna keep this pressed open, just like this. And now for all views, we're gonna trim the seam allowance on the back side here down to about an eighth of an inch. On the front here, where you've stitched the pocket down, you can see here's my diagonal pocket opening stitching here. Here's my front pocket, right? And then you can see my stitch line right there. 
and where we basted it in the seam allowance, we need to remove that basting stitch and I need to remove a few stitches of my top stitching as well. We're gonna just trim down only the pocket so that we can reduce some of the bulk when we go to enclose the seam with the flat filled seam. So here I am, I'm just removing a few last stitches. I already did most of my basting stitch down right here. And so now this edge is ready to be trimmed. So we're only gonna trim the front pocket and we're gonna trim the entire back seam. So remember, make sure you don't catch anything else in here. Just like that. And now we're gonna trim this back seam allowance down to eight and one eighth of an inch as well. And we're about to double stitch this so it will be secure by the time we're done. I know this feels a little bit like, oh, hey, we're really exposing this seam for in, um, to maybe some potential blowouts, but we're going to stitch it nice and secure in just a second. All right, now we're approaching the view A opening here at the hem, and we're just gonna go right up to where we trimmed it and stop, just like that. So now this is how our hem looks for view A. This is the back and this is the front. This is clipped here. All right, now we're gonna go to the iron and we're gonna press our front seam toward the back and then we're gonna press it under quarter of an inch to enclose that edge there. And try and make this nice and even. So we're not gonna press this view A section here. We'll just leave that just like that and we're gonna press this toward the back first. And I kind of tug it so I get it nice and flat on the right side. I'll tug, especially in this curve area here. I really want to tug that. All right, now we're going to turn under that front edge here. You don't have to trim this down or do any of the folding here. I did just by habit. It'll be easier if you don't. All right, so we're gonna go all the way up the leg, and remember, we're still tugging it, making sure we get nice and flat on the other side, and we're turning this under a quarter of an inch. Your edge is probably raw, not surged like mine was. All right, and then up here, remember we trimmed that front pocket down, so we should easily be able to fold this over the edge. All right, now we're gonna stitch this from the right side. If you wanna pin that folded edge, you can, but it's probably pretty secure right now. And um, you can also use tapes and things like that. So I'm going to first stitch the outer edge. So I'm gonna go a quarter of an inch away from my seam, but I can feel my folded edge in there and that's really what's gonna guide me. So we're gonna try and land right on the edge of that folded seam allowance. And I'm pulling apart my seam right here. I'll probably have to roll up the inside of my pant here. All right, so we're just gonna go right alongside the opening of view A. If you're doing view B, you can just go all the way down to the hem. Same with view A, just like that. And now we're gonna do it again, right against the seam here. So we're gonna put our second row. Here we go, All right, and here's our, our hole right here. And let's see how we did here. Make sure we don't have any raw edges poking out. That looks pretty darn good. This is a little bit of my surging thread that I had removed. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, All right for the view A pleated side pocket here, we have our interfacing and we have our pleated pocket. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn it wrong side up and we're gonna take these notches that are right here along this fold line and bring them to the center notch here. And the way I did it first was I lined up my notches like this top, bottom, ironed this edge, and then I folded it back along that same notched edge, ironed it again, and then did the same for the other side. So then you have your pleat. 
And now we're gonna finish these edges here, just like this. And now we've basted that pleat in place. And now we're gonna take our interfacing and we're going to press it to the top edge here. All right, now we're gonna hem the top. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press this a half inch, and then we're gonna press this at one inch, but we're not gonna stitch quite yet. All right, so we're gonna do that. So we're going to press a half inch along this top edge here. Hold that pleat closed. It's going to be quite thick in the center. Now we're going to fold it back, right sides together, and we're just going to sew across the end here. So fold it back against that fold that we just did. Now we're going to sew this a half inch. Repeat for the other side. Now I'm definitely going to check and make sure that my fold is symmetrical. All right, we're going to trim our corners here. Turn it right side out. And let's get this nice and crisp here at the top. All right, and now we'll stitch this down. We're going to stitch it from the right side. Like that. There we go. All right, let's fold under our edge here. All right, so now we're gonna place this on our pant leg. I have my markings here. I'm gonna pin so it doesn't shift. And we're gonna do two rows of stitching like we've been doing. Anytime I get to these little foldy parts here, I always tuck them in there. I always go across the same number of stitches. And I, I do a continuous stitch because I like fewer back stitches. And I clip this thread so I don't back stitch over it. There we go. All right, there's our pleated pocket. All right, for the gusseted pocket top or view B uh, cargo pocket, the first thing we're gonna do is prep the gusseted top with the interfacing. And then the next step is we're going to press a half inch along this uninterfaced edge here, just like this. And now we're gonna fold this along the interface line here, right sides together. And we're gonna sew the ends here, half inch seam. We'll trim the seam allowance down here to a quarter inch. And we're going to turn it out. And then we'll press this since we have it nice and square. We'll press this now with the iron and we'll set it aside. All right, now we're going to take pieces eight and nine. You're going to have one short and two longer pieces here, just like this. And we're going to sew these together. We're gonna go from corner here to here. And if you have trouble figuring out where the middle is, what I like to do is just fold right here. Give myself a little crease. And as long as I keep this edge at the half inch seam allowance, we'll be able to find right where to sink our needle in. So we're gonna pivot at that crease line. I'm gonna sink my needle down. Pivot, line up, make sure these edges are still lined up. And we're going to clip into this V right here. And now we're going to finish these edges so we don't get really long threads in our pocket. Just like this. All right, so once you have that seam finished and it's snipped right there, we're going to press these seam allowances opposite directions like that. So that when these seams are stacked one on top of the other, they'll nestle together and lay less bulky, just like that. So we'll press that. And now we're gonna repeat this for our other side here, just like this. All right, once you've pressed your seam allowances away from each other and you've pressed this right sides together, it looks like a little frame right now, we're gonna call this the gusset. Now we're going to press this top edge here a half inch down and we're going to hem it. All right, there we go. All right, now we're gonna take our gusset and we're gonna put this right sides together. And the top isn't gonna line up there, so we're gonna line up our corner here. 
And so at our half inch seam, we'll pivot at our corners in the seam. Get all those threads to the outside. Keep that under gusset out of the way. Just gonna pull it out there. Pivot at the seam allowance. All right, now we're gonna trim these corners here and we're gonna finish our seam allowance. So we'll trim. And we'll finish. All right, now we're gonna press our seam allowances. We're gonna press them away from this front piece here. So press them all that direction. And we'll turn these right side out. So I'm gonna press the seam allowance just like this, nice and flat. So here's how our pocket is looking, just like this. So now we're gonna take that top piece that we started sewing and we're going to lay this lined up to the edges here. And we wanna make sure our seam allowances stay towards the pocket body here. And we're gonna stitch this together at a half inch seam. And I'm lining up those, that juncture right there. I'm gonna open this up like this, but I'm gonna press the seam allowance towards the pocket, just making sure. We're gonna press the seam allowance up into this pocket top and then close it just like this to enclose it from the right side. So make sure you have all these corners nice and tidy here. And we're gonna sew all of our gusset to the inside here. We're gonna top stitch along the seam. I have a little back stitch here since I ran out of bobbin thread. If you find these corners are really thick, I would walk your hand wheel towards you. So just turn the hand wheel towards you, stitch at a time when you get to these really thick corners. All right, so there we go. All right, now we're going to finish this edge here and we're gonna turn it under a half inch and get ready to stitch it down to the pants. It's time to attach our gusseted pocket. So I have my markings here on the front leg and we're gonna line this up. So this is this is how our pocket's looking. Let's get rid of some of these threads here, just like this. And we're gonna line this up to the markings. And let's just spend a second getting our pocket to lay nice and flat here. And we're gonna do a little outline around the pocket on our leg. Because of the gusset, it's gonna move around a little bit, and so you're gonna need this little extra help getting it nice and lined up. Just like this, all right. And then uh, I'm gonna pin down the middle here like that. And now we're gonna lift this up, and tuck our surging under there, maybe even fold down the corner here so we get a nice clean edge. Line it up to that mark that I made. And now we're going to stitch this into place. I'm gonna keep that edge lined up to the marking. And it's gonna get pretty thick down here at the corner. So again, if you get a little nervous, walk your hand wheels stitch by stitch. Pivot. I'm gonna push this this way and then I'm gonna push it up like this. Tucking that raw edge under there. Turn and push this down, push this up and keep this. Yeah, it wants to pull away, so that's why we're gonna use the marking on the pant that we did. And I'm gonna tuck this edge down to make it a little neater. Give it a good back tack. All right, now we're gonna tack down this loose gusset top here and we're just gonna go right along the edges here, keeping it lined up to our markings. All right, now we have our gusseted pocket. Look at that, plenty of room in there. All right, now we're gonna make some flaps. So we've fused our interface into one of our angled flaps, and now we're gonna trim a half inch away on this long straight edge here. We're gonna place our flaps right sides together. So a half inch seam. And we're gonna trim the perimeter edge here and trim it down to an eighth of an inch. 
I'll turn it right side out and press. We're going to top stitch now two lines. All right, for the square flap, we're going to apply our interfacing here and we're going to fold right here along the top. And this is asymmetrical. So we're going to fold it and we're going to sew half inch seam along our short ends here. And we want to make sure that they're symmetrical. We're going to trim, turn, press, and pop stitch. All right, for either flap, you're going to place your flap face down so that the uninterfaced side is facing up here. We have this little extension hanging down. We're going to line that up with the top of the pocket. We're going to sew it a half inch seam just like that. And now we're going to trim this down here. And I really recommend that you flip it over and put the flap side down here so that you don't accidentally cut this, this pant section here because you can't see it it's just like that all right and now we're going to pull this down now if you if you pull hard you're going to be pull, lifting up your pant and pulling it right so we really want to crease it at that stitch line so i hold this down i kind of press this and you're going to really have to let it know who's boss here so sometimes i have to push the flap a little bit just to kind of get it to sit right on top of itself here we don't want to pull too far Let's get rid of this little thread right here. And now we're gonna enclose this raw edge. That's why I say I just kind of let this loosen up, but you still want a nice crease here. And you're also gonna have to contend with your pocket pushing against your presser foot and you don't wanna catch it either. So, so I'm gonna start right here and st stitch along the crease first. This is a little bit easier because the pocket's not gonna be pushing on my presser foot yet. All right, now we're gonna do our second row. And this time you wanna, might wanna pull your pocket out of the way the best you can. It'll be a little less thick though where your needle is sewing. So that's the good news. <laughs> so I've pressed the, po pulled the pocket kind of down out of the way there. There we go. And you're gonna do the exact same thing no matter if you're using the square or the angled flap. All right, here we have our finished cargo pocket with flap. Both styles looking good. All right, now we're on to our zipper fly. So I have finished just my fly facing here first. And then once we sew the whole center front, I'll finish the lower portion. I like to do it this way because of the way I like to finish the bottom edge here. And it's a little trickier to maneuver with my serger. So we're gonna place these right sides together and we're gonna baste from this notch here to that circle there. And because I've already pre-clipped this, I gotta be really careful that I don't include the clip in the seam. And then once we get to this point here, we're gonna backstitch, put it to our regular stitch length and finish out the crotch curve. All right, so let's lay these together here. And I've got this on a basting stitch, so no backstitch at the top. I'm gonna come straight down. I'm lifting up the pants back here because they've gotten so heavy now. I'm gonna put them up here on the table. So they're not pulling on the needle at all. Put our stitch length back to normal. Back stitch here. And we'll finish out our seam allowance, or seam. All right, and now I'm gonna finish this little lower crotch curve with my serger. All right, now we're gonna open up our fly and we're gonna give it a good press. And we're gonna press our seam allowance to the left front. All right, now from the right side, and making sure that your fly facing is open and your crotch seam is pressed to the right, which is on the left front. We're going to top stitch to the right of this seam. We're gonna do our regular stitch length or at a top stitch length that you like. So now I'm off of the fly facing and I'm getting onto the crotch seam and it's pressed this way. All right, with our pants wrong side up, we're gonna flip the pants 
to each other, right sides together, just like this. So we have our fly facing sticking out right here. Now we're gonna take our zipper and we'll put it face down. Let's make sure all of our pant is out of the way here. It's got, you've got a lot of pant to manage now. I pinned mine all kind of in a wad so that I can manage it a little easier and it's not pulling against the needle and pulling against what I'm trying to do. All right, so if you have a zipper foot, you're probably gonna to wanna to put that on now. And you're gonna to wanna to align your zipper tape to the bottom of the fly facing here and the edge of the zipper tape to our basted seam. And we're gonna stitch right here in the twill tape. And now we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna edge stitch it. So now our zipper is right side up and we're gonna edge stitch. It just reinforces it and lets it lay flat. Makes it stronger. There we go, I got a little wobble there. All right, now I like to turn my pants upside down now and we're gonna flatten them out like this. And I let this zipper flop over onto the other fly facing here. And so you don't really get, want to get an accidental like buckle or tuck pulling this over, you know, and getting like a little buckle right here, right? So we want this to be nice and flat. Lay it down flat and then pick up just the fly facing and the zipper tape. And we're gonna put two rows of stitching in the twill tape. And again, you can use a zipper foot. My zipper foot isn't the greatest on an industrial. It's pretty narrow and it just doesn't give me a lot of traction on the material. All right, I'm gonna clean up some of these threads. All right, so we're almost done. So now your zipper wants to stay to that side that we just stitched it right over there, right? So now we need to put that fly curve in and our fly shield behind it. All right, so here's my top stitching template. So I'm gonna lay this in line with my waist edge at the size that I chose here. And I'm just gonna line up this edge to the basted seam there. And I can do this through the paper here, so that's why I didn't really trim that edge. I'm just getting something to give me a guide. I can feel the zipper facing under there and that's kind of the ultimate guide. All right, so I'm gonna do one stitch there and a second stitch parallel. So I'm gonna give myself another mark telling me exactly where that fly facing is. So I'm gonna go from this side here and right here just gonna give myself a guide so I know I cannot go past that point on the right side. I have two lines here. They're probably really hard for you to see, but you can see the shiny line there. All right, and so now I'm gonna put my two rows between these two rows. <laughs> so I'm gonna line up against my zipper teeth here. Okay, all right, so. I'm using the zipper teeth right here along the presser foot. All zippers are a little different from one another. So just because I do it this way, your zipper may be a different width overall. The teeth might be wider or narrower. So do what works best for what you want on your fly and just pay attention to those things as long as you're looking at where it's gonna end up and where that facing edge is and where your zipper starts and stops, you're gonna be just fine. It doesn't have to look just like this one. All right, I'm gonna do a second row, keeping in spirit with our double top stitching. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna do our fly shield. All right, so we're gonna put our shield right sides together and we're gonna sew around the curved edge there, half inch seam. I'm gonna trim the seam allowance. Because my fabric's a little thick, I think I'll give it a little, a few clips here just to make it lay nice and smooth. All right, now we're gonna turn and iron. So we turned our fly shield right side out, we pressed this edge and then we finished the straight edge here. And now we're going to attach it to our 
facing here, just like this, and line it up. And um, be really firm about this because you don't want it to get misaligned. So we're gonna hold these two together, turn it around. You can even start your pant upside down. And then we're going to sew these two together. We don't want to catch the pant, just the facing and the shield. And we're always trimming our threads because this area gets so messy no matter what. There's our shield right there. And now we're going to secure this down to the pant. So we're going to give it a couple of bar tacks and usually there's one right around here and then one right here. And this is these are basically just um, a way to reinforce this high stress area and also make it look nice and tidy. Sometimes I like to use this as an opportunity to sort of smooth out any weird um, curves that I got while sewing my fly facing down. And you can see right here, it's, a, it's, it's okay. So maybe I would put my bar tack here or maybe right here where it gets a little wobbly. I like to use that and I do a fake bar tack. I just do a bunch of forward back stitches, but you can do a proper one using a zigzag machine. And then we'll do one here because of the stress of opening and closing your zipper. Right, just like that. And now we can remove our basting stitches down the center front and you can double check, make sure it got caught. And there they are, there's our two bar tacks. All right, so now we'll take out this basting stitch and our fly is all done, good job. When I do this, you're gonna be able to get rid of one thread, but the other thread's gonna stay inside there. So if you can see, I'm getting these little loops along this edge, that's the side that's gonna stay in there. So don't pull on those till the very end. You want those loops because we're gonna be able to grab and get rid of most of it, as long as we have that loop at the very bottom when we're done. Just try not to pull on it too much because you might lose your loops. You only need one at the very bottom. All right, and there it is right there. So now pull that and see all of them disappear. And then we can cut that. And sometimes what I do is I'll press my scissors against the seam. I'm pulling the threads pretty hard. Just trying to pull as much out of there as possible and let the, the last little bit get sucked back in. And then we have a nice clean edge, best we can there. All right, and there's our fly. Looks good. All right, so let's finish our end seam and our waistband now. All right, we're gonna do our center back crotch. So we're gonna line this up. And then we'll finish this edge and press it to our right. So press your center back seam to the left or the right leg as if you're wearing it. Basically, whatever the opposite of your center front seam of your crotch is, because then we can offset these thicknesses here just like this. And it'll be less bulky and more comfortable and easier to sew. So we have this pinned here. We're gonna sew our entire inseam together here. Finish this edge here. All right, we're gonna make some belt loops now. So I finished one long edge of the belt loop here, and then I ironed it in thirds. So I first ironed up this raw side, and then I folded the other one. And we're gonna do two rows of top stitch from the right side. So you do want this edge to be semi-close to your fold over here so that you make sure you catch it and your two lines of stitching are looking symmetrical. So we're gonna catch this with a 1 8 inch top stitch from the edge. All right, make sure that you've caught both sides. And now we're gonna cut this into six pieces, four inches each. Now let's tack them to our waistline line here and we're gonna use the notches for the placement of our belt loops. Okay, this should be a notch underneath your pocket right here. So we'll put this one, we're gonna put it face down. We're gonna line it up to the waist edge and stitch it at a quarter of an inch. And 
And the other notch is roughly in the center of this pocket here. It's right there. And at center back, we're gonna make an X. So we're gonna take two of our belt loops here and we're gonna lay them on here. And I'm just gonna make sure they're equidistant from the waist edge here. Pull up so this lower corner touches the waistline. More here. All right, there's our belt loops. Okay, time to make our D-ring holder here. So you have your piece of fabric here. It has a little notch. So we're gonna fold this notches together. We're gonna sew this half inch seam and we're gonna press the seam open, turn it right side out. And then once we have this turned right side out, we're gonna press it, trying to keep that center seam pressed open. Thread it through your D-ring here with the seam against the straight edge of the D-ring. And now we're gonna base the top here. Now we're gonna place this on the right front of the pant and we're gonna locate our belt loop here. We're gonna lay it right next to this belt loop here and tack it in place, just like so. Time to sew our waistband. So I have my waistbands laid out, right sides together, an interfaced uh, group and an uninterfaced group. So we're gonna sew our side seams, half inch seam here. Right And we're gonna lay these right sides together and we're gonna sew them together to one another along the top interior curve edge. All right, there we go. So we have our whole waistband. And we're gonna press this seam here just cause it'll be a little easier to press it while it's not attached to the pants. And that's all I'm gonna press for now cause I'm gonna sew these a little differently than the instructions have you do it. So let's press this seam. So I'm just gonna give just a few clips in here to make sure that it relaxes. All right, so this is how I like to do my waistbands. I like to do this for cuffs and collar stands and things like that. So I am going to take my waistband and I'm gonna sew the interior waistband to the pant first. So we're gonna do the right side of the inner waistband to the wrong side of the pant. And this has an extension at the left front. So we're gonna line it up to this notch right here like this. So remember, it's right side facing up of for both the pant and the waistband right now. And we're going to lay this down, line it all up. And if you had to shorten your zipper like I do, this is when you need to really be careful when we're going across those zipper teeth, unless you've already shortened it. So I get up to my teeth here. And I like to walk my hand wheel and go around those teeth really carefully. There we go. So push all these little raw threads here. Just push them towards the waistband. Get them in there now. It'll be a lot easier later. And sew at your half inch seam. And we're gonna wanna match our seam, side seams up to side seams. center back to center back. Now, if you want a label hanging down from your waist seam, now's the time to slip it in here. So you can slip it in there. And then this way, when we do our waistband seam right now, it'll get caught in there. So let's find that center. Put it on here like this. I usually like to tack it first, but I almost forgot it. There we go. So again, just keep all these threads, like I'm always sweeping them towards the waistband. Just, it just cuts down on the work later. Pull them underneath, pulling the waistband down so that all my raw edges line up. You gotta trust me, I promise this way is a lot easier 
than trying to finish it on the inside. All right, so going now here we are to our X so you might need to position it a little better because this wasn't really going to hold it in a perfect X. I'm also going to check my weight my um, label in there pull it down just a tad just like that So we're getting close to the end, so I like to make sure that everything is going to line up. So we're going to hang off this seam allowance right here off the edge. We want about a half inch hanging off there. All right, and here we are at our zipper teeth again. So again, when I get close, at least this time I can see them, which makes it a lot easier. I like to walk the hand wheel right between those teeth. Okay, so now the first thing we're gonna do before we do anything else is make sure that our fly is gonna line up. So I like to check it right now. So I'm gonna pull out the waistband, pull the pant, just kind of flattening out this whole front section here and we're going to zip up the pants and we're going to look at how this waistband is lining up to the other side. We don't want it to be too low or too high, we want it to line up and I, I really try and get a whole section of this as flat as possible to see and see I can see my seam on this side is a little bit lower so when that happens, don't just make the seam allowance bigger on one side to correct this because then what happens is you've made the waistband smaller and then it, won't then it won't match along the top edge of your waistband. So you need to remove just a little bit of your waistband back up to that point and then re-sew it at a seam allowance that will allow it all to line up. So for this one, I'm gonna do this side since it's the closest here. I don't have to take out as much as I would over here. And um, it looks like I need to just raise it up like an eighth of an inch. So we'll just take this out a little bit and then I'll raise it up and then we'll be back in action. All right, so now let's trim our zipper tape if you need to. Now that everything is secure. Okay, so now let's pull our waistband up. And we're gonna fold it over and put it right sides together and we're gonna sew across our ends here. Now don't fold this edge up. I'll tell you why in a second. It'll make it a lot easier to get, keep it lined up if you don't fold it up first. So let's sew the end here and try and do a nice straight line. And I kind of tug this down, make sure it's all nice and flat. We don't want any buckling. So sometimes I wait to trim this corner until I know that everything is lining up, especially the tops of my waistband. Because if you trim this corner and you need to raise this up, you don't have any fabric left. So make sure that you check your waistband height before you do that. All right, so let's put this side right sides together here. And this side is our extension. So on this one here, we're gonna sew across this bottom edge and the center front edge here. So let's start on this side here. So let's start right here at the waist. So I'm gonna pull, give this a nice little tug, push this down, put these right sides together. I'm gonna to hold that pretty firmly, you can pin it. I'm gonna continue my stitching at the waist here, straight out to the short end of this waistband. Like this, pivot at the half inch seam line. And there we go, now we have our extension there. 
So now we can trim these corners and you can kind of try and see how it's all lining up before you get too far. So let's zip our zipper here. It's better to know now. I know you don't want to know now, <laughs> but it's better to know now. All right, so we're gonna go with that. So now let's trim our corners here. And for right here, we could trim this, and I would err on trimming it um, on the inside of the pants just a tiny bit. And I wouldn't go all the way down because we can always trim it more, but we can't take it back. We don't want any little frayed edges popping out right there. So we're just gonna be conservative at first. And let's just trim down a little bit here. You don't want to trim down the seam allowance because we want to fill it up in there so it's a nice, evenly thick waistband. All right, so now we're going to turn this right side out. All right, so now we have our extension turned out. So now what we're going to do is push the seam allowance up into the waistband here. We're going to turn this down. So now one little helpful thing I find is if I go along the waistband here, especially since we pre-pressed it, and I'm going to flatten it out and keep it in its the shape that it's going to be in forever. So let's flatten it out here and kind of shape it. So this is a little fabric flaw here. It's not a chalk mark, but I'm going to trim that little thread there. All right, and so what I like to do is pin about an inch away from this top of the waistband edge here. Now what this does is it gives you a really positive surface to pull against when you go to turn under this outer edge here. And it helps prevent you from over rotating the inner waistband to the outer waistband. So you can keep that nice top edge here. So just go around and I'm just sort of flattening it out and making sure it's in, it's one on top of the other and I'll double check it at the iron too. You're going to see why this, this is a um, helpful little thing. No matter which way you do your waistband, this is a little helpful way to kind of get a nice edge. All right, so now we know we have our waistband where we want it. It looks good. Let's check our label, okay. And so now we can go through, push our seam allowance up into the waistband, turn under this top edge and pin it down. And we know that if, if this, this is pinned right here, we really can't go wrong. We can't pull this inner waistband to the outside and we're, we're going to pull it enough and not too much. So we're gonna put this right side up so we can see our edge. And I usually do the landmarks first. I'm gonna do the side seam here first and my center back. And then I'll start a, um, the center front a little bit and then I work my way in between. So we get all the landmarks so that nothing can shift and then we don't get a waistband that torques. All right, so now we have our landmarks pinned. We can sort of finesse in the in-between places here. So I'll kind of get in the middle of these two spots, and then I go back and do on either side. And we're just trying to get that fold just past the seam that we sewed there, so that when we edge stitch it, we enclose it all. We don't really care where the bobbin hits on the inside, I mean, we care, but it's not as crucial visually. Whereas if you do it the other way and you're not very comfortable sewing waistbands, you might feel a little bit of pressure to try and land on that inner waistband from the outside and you might miss it sometimes and then you have to kind of fix it. So this way we don't have to worry about that. No one really sees the inside. All right, we still need to add our elastic at the center back. So we've got most of our waistband pinned here and we're going to lift this up. I'm going to tack the elastic to the inner waistband a half inch past the notch and the notch is right here. So that stitching line will be right under our belt loop. So we're gonna extend the elastic past a little bit 
and then we're going to stitch it down. And I would stitch it really firmly. By now you've probably tried on your pants, checked your elastic length to see what is going to work for you. Mine is an inch and a half longer than what was in the packet, so hopefully that's going to work well for me. I don't really need it to cinch very much. But because we're going to be stitching through the elastic, I know I still need it to be a little tighter than I need because stitching through it is going to keep it stretched a little bit. I'm trying to bear all of that in mind when choosing my elastic length. All right, so we have it. So now let's finish the pinning here. I'm going to put this under the waistband edge there. Okay. So I'm going to stretch this, find my center elastic there, fold it right there. All right, and so we're going to we're going to set this on top of the elastic there. It still needs to extend past it, but I don't want to wrap around it since I stitched all the way to the bottom of my elastic here. So we'll fold this and we'll fold it just past that stitch line. All right, so I've got most of my waistband pinned. So let's talk a little bit about the center front here. When you're right here at the center front bit, right? So you see how I have, this is the seam allowance of the short edge of the top waistband, right? And we have inside here, if I open it up, right? You can see there's this waist, this seam allowance right here. And that is the other side of the waistband. So. That one's already folded up because it's with the waist seam. So here's my little tip with this. When you fold this, wrap it around the seam allowance right here. So in other words, don't just fold this straight up. Fold it up so that it wraps around this little folded edge of the waistband like this. And then place it where you want it. So you don't just have to just shove it up in there. If you do that, you're going to get a edge right here that will enclose all of the little fraying bits and bobs that can happen there. And so you can maybe see right here how I have this thickness that kind of right here. So I take my awl and I, I just shove it in there very forcefully. I kind of grab a little bit and pull and I'll sit here and just kind of, you know, worry at it a little bit. And then this way, it's very clean right here. There's no little threads that can sneak out of there because sometimes those are really the problem with your waistband. Everything else is looking really good and you're like, why do I have, it looks raw right here, you know, and it's not. So that is just a nice clean way because all we can see right now is my seam allowance, my, or my seam and it's contrast thread. So it's showing up. If it were matching, you wouldn't even be able to see it. All right, so let's finish out my last couple of stitches or pins here. And now we're gonna sew the waistband. Make sure we've turned it up enough. And I might adjust this as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna start stitching right here at the center back. I'm gonna go all the way around the waistband. So we're gonna make a nice big loop. Remember, we've secured this edge here when we were kind of pinning it right here at the top. And we can even take out some of these if you want a few less pins to deal with here, the ones that are parallel to the waistband that kind of set us up for success. And remember, you just want this waistband to go just past that first stitching line right here. And we're gonna be stitching through the waistband and the elastic. So anytime you're stretching your elastic when you're sewing, make sure you stretch, then sew. Don't stretch it as your machine is going because you don't want to accidentally bend your needle. That can have some pretty bad effects on your machine. All right, here we go. I won't back stitch until the very end. So here I am, I'm gonna stretch this out. I'm gonna make sure that this edge is nice and smooth here. And I'm just gonna hold it slightly, or hold it stretched and stable while I stitch. So we have this folded edge here, just past our stitching line.
These are looking really good. We're almost done here. All right, so for our first belt loop, we're going to pull these little threads off of the end. That way we can just make sure it's nice and clean when we turn it under. They, they like to sneak out. All right, we're gonna fold it a half inch under, line it up to the top of the edge there. And I like to stitch right where the top stitching is. So I just kind of keep it. And we're gonna do fake back tacks here. If you wanna do real back tacks, you can, but I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. And then we're just gonna go along and do all of our, our belt loops here. Pull the threads off and then turn it under, line it up and then stitch it down. For these angled ones, you're probably gonna have to trim a little bit of the corner off of the edge there, just so that when we're folding them down, they look more, they're kind of hidden under the belt loop itself. So just clip a little corner off and then line it up. And then um, I'm gonna kind of take the fold and line it up parallel to the top of the waist the best I can, <laughs> and then we'll stitch it. So let's clip off this little corner here. All right, we're getting to our last few steps. So if you're doing view A and you need to make a draw cord, I'm gonna make mine as well. Uh, you can just use twill tape if you like to, but uh, I couldn't find any twill tape to match, so I'm just gonna make some out of my fabric. Now, the instructions have a perfectly good way to make this, and that is to take your piece of fabric once you've cut it, and lay it right sides together along the long edge here, like this, just all the way down, and sew a quarter inch seam down that long edge, and then turn it. So if you have a way to turn a tube, that would be the way to do it. My fabric's a little too thick for that. So what I did instead is I ironed this by folding it in half along the entire length, and then I open it up, and then I fold each long edge to that full original fold line there. And then I fold it in half again. And then now I'm just gonna stitch on either side of this cord here, or yeah, draw cord. And I'm gonna do both sides just because, you know. There we go, just like that. And then that will be a nice flat cord for me to use for my hem there. All right, and then for my hem, for view B, you can hem this regular. So you're gonna fold this at a half inch and then fold it at another inch, iron it and stitch your hem down. And we're gonna leave an opening for elastic. Now for view A, we have the opening in the side seam. I've already finished this one, so I'll show you. So we have our opening here in the side seam and our hem should center over this hole here. So when we stitch down this hem, we can stitch the entire hem, closing it, and then you're gonna slip your twill, twill tape or your draw cord, whatever you have, into the hem going all the way around using something like a safety pin. Mine was pretty stout though, safety pin kind of gave me a little trouble. So make sure that you pick something that can't open up while it's inside the hem, just a little tip. All right, and then this one is ready to go. We're completely done here. So let me hem this one with you and we're gonna do the elastic together. So we're gonna leave about an inch and a half opening on this hem here. So I'm looking for the back of my pants. So this is the back here. So let's see, we're gonna start, um, maybe we'll, we'll leave it like right here at the end seam. So we'll start here. And I'm gonna stitch this from the right side. I know about how much this width is here. I can line up my stitch line right here to the throat plate. And then I know to keep my cuff lined up to that edge there so that I can sew a nice straight line and it'll look nicer from the right side. All right, so I'm gonna go about a couple inches away from the seam right there. We're gonna stitch all the way around and we'll stop at that seam. I'm sure you put your, the weight of your pant on your table, otherwise it might pull against your needle. All right, so we're approaching the end here. 
and we'll give ourselves that space. Just like that. And now we're gonna take our elastic and I'm gonna use this little elastic threader tool, but you can use, again, something like a safety pin. Taking out this little section of him because it was clearly not the right width and it was preventing my tool to get it going through. All right, so we just wanna be careful we don't twist our elastic here. So we have this one here, we have this one here. And let's take this out of the tool. This fabric is pretty stiff. So even that little tool was struggling a little bit. So something maybe a little slicker would have been better, but I was a little worried about using the safety pin. All right, so I'm gonna overlap these flat and I didn't twist these and you really wanna secure this. So sew over it a few times. Doesn't have to be pretty. I'm gonna do it there and again here. Something like that. I'm not even gonna trim the threads. We're just gonna pull it in there. Evenly distribute it. It's free moving in there so it'll eventually sort, it, sort itself out. All right, so now we just need to close this right here. So I stretch the fabric, just make it flat, and then catch up with my original seam here. Make sure that that elastic is out of the way. And you can, you know, peek in here, push it toward the end so you know exactly where it's at. You can feel it and you know. And then just enclose it. Just like that. Trim your threads. And then give it a few little tugs here. This fabric's pretty thick, so it's probably not gonna draw it in very much. Just like that, a little gentle elastic closure. There we go. So now we have our draw cord here, and we have our elastic version. All right, time for our buttons and snaps, and then we're done. All right, for our final step, we just need to work on our waist closure here. So the Esmond Pants have, has a double snap closure plus a hidden button. And if you're doing snaps for your closure, I highly recommend doing this button to support the snaps because even if you get a really high strength snap, sometimes they will still pop open when you're squatting down or moving around or sitting and um, just being all around in normal day-to-day -day activities. So it's really nice having this button to kind of take the load off the snaps. So you wanna put your buttonhole on the under waistband, which isn't usually typical. Usually when you're doing your waist closure, you're gonna be putting your buttonhole on your top waistband and you know it lines up right here with above your zipper fly. However, in this case, we want this to be hidden. So we're putting our button on the top waistband on the inside and we're doing our buttonhole on the under waistband. For my thread on the buttonhole, I ended up using my top stitch thread and my machine was a little picky about it. I had to use a regular weight thread in the bobbin and that's the case for most threads if you're using a heavier weight in the top. You're probably gonna have to use a lighter weight in the bobbin. For your snaps, the only tip I really have, because you can just follow the manufacturer's directions in installing your style of snap. These are spring snaps right here. Um, the one little tip I have that I found that makes this just a completely different experience and a lot easier is when you real when you've decided exactly where you want your snaps, stack your waistbands exactly how it's all going to be closed. And when you cut the hole for the snaps using the die, go all the way through both waistbands at the exact same time. This way you don't have to line anything up later on when you do the other half. It really makes the difference between making this a five minute job and a 15 minute job or more. So just stack those up, cut all the way through both waistbands and you're gonna have perfectly lined up snaps. Well, it's been a pleasure sewing the Esmond pants with you. They're quite a project, good job, and I can't wait to see yours. Tag me in your post, I'd love to see them. Thanks for watching, until the next time.